Hi, this is Robbie Greer. This is Milestone 3, and I'm going to be showing the skinned animations on compute shaders. To start out with, I have a special game object for skin, where uh, it now updates most of the skinning logic right here in this update skin GPU method. So this grabs the compute shader uh, for the mixer, um, and it gives it inputs for its uh, previous blend frame and its next frame as well as the time I'm going to use to do the interpolation, and then it runs it. So this shader is a wrapper around the HLSL. Um, it takes in the constant for the time, and then the two frame buffers, and then it'll spit out a frame buffer result uh, for the interpolated time. Um, and so that gets called with this open method to take in the inputs, bind it, and then it runs with dispatch. So the underlying shader looks like this. It's got lerp and slurp, and then it does uh, the correct thing for each uh, type of transform right here, and it'll spit that out into the bone results array. And so the num threads here is just the bone count max so that this will occur for each bone um, and update each of them. So after I've run the mixer, uh, the next thing I do is I immediately run the compute shader for the world. Um, so this takes in some things from my skeleton for the hierarchy, um, as well as the pivot and the inverse bind array. And then it has a similar interface, so you can open it and then run it. And in this case, I'm actually going to wait for the results, which are going to be the world positions uh, of my bones. So let's take a look at the world shader. It has a similar wrapper with the same interface, except now it takes in a table for the hierarchy, as well as the depth, and then uh, the matrices for the pivot, and the inverse binds. Um, so it's pretty similar, except the underlying shader here for the world um, looks like this. So the key thing, one of the key things here is this um, hierarchy table, and that gets calculated in the skeleton constructor because it's constant for each skeleton. So I just have an algorithm to create a giant table, uh, and I'll show that in the output when it's running. But that creates the table for the world. Um, which is going to run, and it looks like this, similar setup with the num threads for each bone. And then we start with the pivot, and that's the transform uh, of the overall object that the user gives you. And then you go through the hierarchy for the depth of this object, and you just multiply by each parent transform um, in order, and that gives you the overall world. And then I also include the inverse bind here, so that I can do the inverse bind multiplication per bone instead of per vertex. Um, and that spits out the world, um, which the engine reads back here when it awaits results, and that's going to get fed to the vertex shader to do the rest of the skinning. Okay, so the way these two shaders talk to each other is through the animation system um, where they live, and when the engine starts up, I call attach to. So this just sets the input of the world shader to be the output of the mixer shader, and that's how they talk to each other. Um, so that is how this game object skin method updates the skinning. Um, and yeah, so let me run it and show you all those things. All right, so you can see the skinned characters are still working as normal. And if we look at the output window, you can see in the object hierarchy, there's no more bones. Um, it's just the pivot and the skin game object uh, because all the hierarchy is getting handled by the compute shader. And if you scroll up here, for example, here's the hierarchy table for my uh, character. And you can see we have the root is just zero. And then all the other bones are some combination of the parents uh, starting at zero. And that's what we iterate over to do the world matrix. Um, so I can switch these animations with the 5, 6, and 7 keys. So that'll change the text and the current animation that's playing for each of them. So you can switch between those dynamically. I'll go back. And then you can also spawn additional characters that just play um, random animations in the background. And they're all updating at the same time. 
and running pretty efficiently, which is pretty cool to see. Um, so yeah, and again, it's all working with the lighting um, and you can see the, the other objects here still all working. And then I can exit and in our output, uh, we exit cleanly. And that's it for Milestone 3. Thank you.